All night long, in the inky darkness caused by the disabled powerhouse, a band of hoodlums and underworld characters ravaged the city, bombing buildings, setting fires and robbing banks and jewelry stores. The police and fire departments did heroic work trying to stem the tide of terrorism. In the morning, the aroused populace stormed the doors of City Hall, demanding protection. Hey, hey, where's the mayor? Why don't he do something? Yes, our homes and stores are being looted. Our factories are being dynamited. Burned. What's the police doing about it, huh? Where's the commissioner? What do we pay taxes for? Look, look the doors are open. Hey, uh, there's, there's the mayor's secretary. Yes, well, the mayor's with us. Quiet, quiet, everybody. The mayor's going to speak. Fellow citizens. I know you have put in a terrible night. We have. Quiet, quiet! Let the man talk. Many of you have lost valuables. Some of you have had your shops broken into or your factories burned by the members of this band of money mad cutthroats. Yes, you're right. Yes, my friends, you all have suffered losses. I too have suffered. A great loss. Last night, at about nine o'clock, my young son was kidnapped. And so when I say to you, my fellow citizens, that I shall leave no stone unturned to apprehend these malefactors, I am sure you will believe me. And be patient with me and the commissioner of police. Hey, hey, Mr. Mayor, how about bearing me in as a deputy? Yes, me too. I, I was in the army. I can shoot. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. But I got two grandsons. Thank you. I suppose there are some of you who would like to assist in this drive. And if there are, report to the commissioner at police headquarters. He can use every fighting man he can get. Now, now I must get back to my office and plan a campaign that will rid this city forever of this criminal scum. Throughout the city, the movement grew to join with the police in running down the dynamiters, arsonists, and robbers. Repairs were rushed on the power plant so that by nightfall the city might again be illuminated. Meanwhile, in an iron-walled room of a secret hiding place, on an island far beyond the city's outskirts, the Blue Beetle is slowly regaining consciousness. Oh, oh, what a head. And had I gimpy through, just grazed my temple. Half an inch to the right, and it had been no more than beetle. Hello, mister. Uh, hello, Sonny. What are you doing here? Well, the men brought me. Aren't you Tom Rogers, the mayor's son? That's right. And you're the blue beetle. Yes, Tom, I'm the blue beetle. Well, then I'm not scared anymore. Why, of course you are not. We'll outwit these scoundrels yet. You and me together. Gee. Tom, I want you to help me. Me help the Blue Beetle? Gee. Now, look, Tom, here's my plan. I want you to... Here in the joining room, the octopus, mastermind of this devilish scheme to systematically drain the great city of its wealth, is conferring with his henchmen. You have done very well so far. We already have $500,000 in cash and many jewels worth fabulous sums. In addition, we have two aces in the hole. You mean the mayor's kid and... And the blue beetle. We can get a big price for the kid, but the blue beetle ain't worth nothing. You forget, Gimpy. He wears a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor that is flexible as silk. Stronger than steel. So what? With that armor and the magic ray, I can become the blue beetle. Gee, Chief, then you become invulnerable like the blue beetle. Exactly, Gimpy. <laughs> but first, we must dispose of... Oh, that kid's crying again. Go in and make him shut up, monkey. Okay, boss, I'll shut him up. 
What's eating you, kid? There's a dead man over there on that cot. Don't tell me the blue beetles croak. I'll have a look. The blue beetle. Wait, he ain't dead. No. The blue beetle is more alive than ever. Oh, the kid double crossed me. Why, I'll. No, you won't. You white livered skunk, because I'm going to. Help! 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 Good blue beetle. Boy, right on the button. Now for the octopus. Look out, blue beetle. Behind you. Stand where you are, blue beetle. <laughs> Thought you had me, didn't you? Well, you'll never get out of here alive. This electric ray gun will burn you to a crisp in that steel armor. Stop that, mister. You can't do that to the blue Shut beetle. Shut up, kid, or I'll blast you too. Say your prayers. Blue Beetle, because... Oh, I'm no, you're a... not. Oh. That was good work, Tom. We we're just in time with that chair leg. Pick up that electric ray gun. We'll go after the octopus. Right with you, Blue Beetle. Now you stay in back of me. I don't want you to get hurt. Here we go. He's disappeared. There he goes. Look through the window there. See him? He's running to the dock. Yes, he's getting into an outboard motorboat. Come on, let's go. Oh, jeez. He's got away from us. Not yet, he hasn't. Well, what are you going to do? Take off my armor and swim after him. Can you swim fast enough to catch him? This is one time I'll find out. Here I go. Gee, look at him go. Oh, boy, can that blue beetle swim? The octopus is shooting at him. The blue beetle's still swimming after the boat. He's gaining. Boy, can he swim. He's gaining. The octopus is out of bullets. The blue beetle's gaining on him all the time. Boy. He, he's caught the boat. He's climbing in the stern of the boat. No. No, he's turning the boat over. There goes the octopus right into the water. Gee, the octopus can't swim. He's calling for help. Oh, well, let me help. Look at the blue beetle. She's diving under the upset boat. Now, now he's turning the boat over right side up. Gee, Mr. Blue Beetle is sure strong. Now he's going to rescue the octopus. Look at those strokes he takes. There, there, he's got the octopus. I ah, should have let him drown. He... He's hauling them up into the boat. Now, now he's starting the motor up. He's turning around the boat, and, and here he comes. Boy, oh, boy. Gee, Blue Beetle, that was swell. See, see, what about the octopus? Is he... No, no, he's not dead. He's just suffering from immersion. I suppose you tie him up while I get dressed. He's harmless now. I've got his gun. He certainly was yellow, wasn't he? When he ran out of bullets and you ducked him. All gangsters are yellow and they haven't got a gun. He's no exception. Well, what are you going to do now? Going to put on my blue armor, take you back to the city limits in that boat and phone the police. But what about the gangsters in the house there? They can't get off the island. We've got the only boat and it's too far to swim to the mainland. Mr. Mr. Blue Beetle, you've done an awful lot for me, saving me from those kidnappers and everything. Oh, that's nothing, Tom. Well, my father will pay you a big reward. The Blue Beetle seeks no reward, Tom. What he does, he does for humanity. Say, would you do me one more favor? Certainly, if I can. What is it? Uh, would you give me that Blue Beetle off your helmet? <laughs> Here you are, Tom. A souvenir to remember the Blue Beetle by. Gee, Blue Beetle, you're swell. <laughs> And so the Blue Beetle brought another gang of criminals to justice, turning them over to the police, 
but himself remaining hidden behind the disguise of the Blue Beetle. Later that day, after setting Tom, the mayor's son, ashore at the city dock and phoning the police where to find the octopus and his cohorts, he disappeared as the Blue Beetle to turn up later at Dr. Fran's little apothecary shop as patrolman Dan Garrett. You say, Dan, the octopus was about to shoot you with this electric ray gun you brought back with you? Yes. He threatened to burn me to a crisp in my metal armor. Oh, what a fiendish idea. But very ingenious. I'd have been roasted alive without a clue as to the cause of my death if it it hadn't have been for young Tom Rogers sneaking from behind and knocking Slut Eye out with that chair leg. Yes, yes. Well, I'd better invent a non-conductive lining for your Blue Beetle armor just in case you run into another electric ray gun. That's a swell idea. You know, Doc, if I had the... Uh, just a minute, Dan. Hello? Hello. This is Mannigan. Is Danny there? Yes. Uh, just a minute. Uh, it's for you, Dan. Oh, thanks, Doc. Hello, Dan Garrett speaking. Hey, Danny. You wanted the police headquarters immediately. Me and you are going to swell new assignment. Oh, yes? Where? Out at John Doerr's carnival. Well, what's up? Some slot machine racketeers are trying to make John Doerr install some crooked slot machines. Okay, Mannequin, I'll be right over. I've got to get going, Doc. It's a new assignment. Never a dull moment in this business. Well, you said you craved action. Yeah. Well, so long, Doc. I may be seeing you tonight. What will develop from Patrolman Dan Garrett's next assignment? Will the Blue Beetle be called into action against the crooked slot machine racketeers? Can the Blue Beetle protect amusement seekers against dishonest exploitation? These questions will be answered in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. copyrighted Fox feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine, on sale at your newsstand. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to... The Blue Beetle.